Good morning. My name is Roger Taylor. And I was graduated from this terrific conference. Since my graduation in 1963, Knox College has called six individuals to be its president. In the 174 year history of the college, which we celebrate this week, Knox College has called 19 individuals to be its president. Some say that the selection of a new president is a milepost or marker in the history of colleges like Knox. Most all agree that the selection of a new president is a time of excitement, <clears throat> joy, and confidence for the future. Today is a day of excitement, joy, and confidence for the future of Knox College. And I feel honored to have been asked to participate in this assembly. It is now my privilege to introduce someone who has an announcement that she would like to share with us. <laughs> the chair of the Board of Trustees of Knox College, Jan Corn, class of 1971. you have shown us and continue to show us is truly legendary. You've inspired so many of us to give of our time, talent, and treasure much more than we ever knew we could. <laughs> for, for another seven months, you will continue to do so. As, uh, as Dr. Amat mentioned when she was with the students two weeks ago today, I hear Rogers on campus, I'm afraid I'm going to have to rip out my checkbook before. <laughs> Thank you for all you and Bunny have done, and for those of you who haven't heard yet, we are going to have a series of celebrations over the next several months to recognize Roger and Ann Taylor. So thank you. This corner is a group of individuals who came together about nine months ago who didn't know each other very well but who just rallied and worked tirelessly as the presidential search committee in order to do this national search and bring us by far by far the most exciting and best candidate that was available in the United States for this job. <laughs> this group shared values, commitment, as I said, a lot of hard work, and we have a new president as a result of it. Richard Riddell chaired, <laughs> chaired the committee, and having chaired the previous presidential search committee that brought us Roger, I am in awe of the job that he has done. It is just amazing, and thank you for the back. Now, I think you all know the person in the purple vest. He, and to his right, Diane Rosenberg, Professor Schultz and Diane Rosenberg were the vice chairs of the search committee. Uh, we also have the person who did more work to keep us, including me, Miss Luddite, organized, <laughs> Vicki Sibley. <laughs> now, 
Now, there were several trustees on the committee, but they, um, they met with us up in Chicago, so with the exception of Diane and Jim Perlee, um, the trustees aren't with us, but all of the staff members, Tom Axtell and Ms. Neal, am I saying it correctly? And our students, Kate and Ariana. <laughs> and our four faculty members, all just gave so much to this process. So thank you, Tim. Mark. <laughs> Everyone. I'm sorry. Oh, Nancy's behind. I, I didn't see Nancy. They're behind Jim Crow and Nancy. Yeah, Tim as well. Thank you all for your work. We really, really appreciate it. I'm coming. I'm coming. Come here. Now, there was a special individual who joined us on the search committee from the community of Galesburg. And uh, Bob Bondi participated in every meeting and stood up at the meeting of the Board of Trustees on Saturday and gave the most glowing endorsement of our presidential candidate, now president-elect, of anyone in the room. He organized community meetings. He was supportive. He asked tough questions. And it shows to me the growth in the community commitment to Knox College that we've seen over the past several years. Bob Bondi, thank you so much. For that. business of the, uh, of the morning. From George Washington Gale on to this day, this place has been dedicated to teaching women as well as men. As a Knox student, I was always encouraged that Knox would help me be whatever I wanted to be, regardless of whether I was a woman or a man. They did that for me. And so it gives me particular pleasure to introduce to you the 19th president of Knox College, the first woman to be so named, Dr. Teresa L. Amat. elected by the Board of Trustees on Saturday. She was the rock star candidate on campus. <laughs> by far the clear choice of students, faculty, staff, and community leaders for this position. She will join us on July 1st. She is currently Provost and Dean of the Faculty at Hobart and William Smith Colleges in Geneva, New York. Dr. Amat has that magical blend of academic achievement, BA at Smith, PhD at Boston College, academic appointments at Wellesley, Bucknell, Gettysburg, and HWS. She's also got a breadth of college administrative experience that is almost unequaled at three institutions, those same, Bucknell, Gettysburg, and HWS. One of the things that was near and dear to my heart is, in her application letter, she, dis she described her love of fundraising. <laughs> yes. Uh, she has been instrumental in helping President Geary at her current institution raise initially $160 million for their endowment 
and then increase that amount to 200 million. She's been involved in numerous successful HWS grants from NSF, Mellon, Luce, to name but a few. But most importantly, what Dr. Amat brings is a love for and a commitment to the liberal arts traditions of a school like Knox. She has a strong involvement in community activities in Geneva, New York, and I know she and her partner, Ray, will bring that same kind of commitment to Galesburg. And lastly, I just want to read a little piece from her application letter, which resonated with me and the search committee. It was part of her vision of why she wanted to be at Knox at this time. And I quote, I have been fortunate in my career to have been present at that moment when the institutional fortunes shift in first subtle and then increasingly tangible ways. In that mysterious lift that we identify as momentum occurs. First at Bucknell in the early 1990s, then Gettysburg in 2000, and now HWS the past five years. Things once thought beyond the institution's reach now become possible as resources, energy, and imagination are mobilized. Ladies and gentlemen, students, staff, friends of Knox College, I am pleased, honored, to introduce to you the 19th president of Knox College, Teresa Amand. wait till I actually do something to earn it. <laughs> it is customary on occasions like this to say that I am honored and humbled, but it is from the heart. I am indeed honored and humbled. To serve as the 19th president of Knox College, to follow in the path trod by your founder, who came from western New York, to Western Illinois to found this remarkable place. A friend of mine to whom I described my thinking about applying was worried that I might actually leave New York. And she, I knew she was worried because she said, Knox? Oh no, oh no. She said, that is a very very good place. <laughs> she was right. Um, I'm a little bit emotional. I understand Roger is too, and I'm very pleased, because if your first president who choked up was a woman, that might be the problem. <laughs> trailblazer on that particular front. <laughs> I want to take this time to thank the search committee for reflecting throughout the search the warmth and the closeness of the Knox community along with its high academic standards. I was not really sure I would pass the test. You should know that the search committee represented you beautifully with heart and soul and mind. I thank the board for their endorsement, and I know that their guidance and their generosity will make the years to come truly wonderful ones. It will not be easy, well nigh impossible, to follow Roger and Ann Taylor. But their leadership and their dedication to Knox will serve for me as a daily inspiration. And I am very grateful to you for all you have done to make it possible for me 
to ascend these steps. Truly, thank you. I was drawn to Knox for its academic excellence its deep commitment to inclusivity and to opening the doors to higher education for all students of talent and promise. And for the strength of the Knox and Galesburg partnership, which I hope very much to be able to enhance in the years to come. There were quite a few decisive moments in this search, but there is one that stands out for me. Some of you may know that my on-campus interview was compressed into one day by the oncoming blizzard and the CNN breaking news headlines that said, life-threatening storm <laughs> headed to the Midwest. I can assure you that a job interview is tense enough without the possibility of losing your life <laughs> on the way home. On the other hand, I was a bit worried that I would never leave and they would have to make me the de facto president. <laughs> Nonetheless, through the heroic efforts of Rich Riddell and Vicki Sibley, a truly remarkable team, uh, I was able to return to Geneva, New York. And I went online to read The Knox Student, because I was curious as, how, as to how they were going to handle this story with its very complex elements of confidentiality. George, Sally, and Mary. <laughs> introduced to them. For a while, I knew, I hoped I wasn't George, <laughs> but I figured I was either Mary or Sally. And as I snooped around on the site, I encountered serendipitously, and this is where I'm going to check up, the letter from 500 students saying, thanking the staff for their care for students during the blizzard. And it was clear to me that in a miraculously short period of time, this petition had materialized in, and was online for me to see these signatures, these concrete signatures of students who understood what others had done for them. And this was to me the turning point. It was the moment at which I knew what a privilege it would be to join this community that when the search chair called me to say the committee would recommend me to the board, I was very deeply honored and very excited and very pleased. Whoever it was that organized that petition, it's on you now. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. about paying it forward. <laughs> did a wonderful job. And there were other moments like that, small and large, throughout the search that deepened my sense that I, too, would be called to Knox should the occasion arise. I think you're all standing. It's crowded. Let's move into a, a different uh, venue for the next part of the day. But I really look forward to meeting every single one of you as soon as I can and to express to you personally my hopes and my aspirations and to hear from you what you hope and aspire to in the future of Knox College. Thank you all. <laughs>